So at Western Beef Development Center, we've been doing corn grazing research for over 18 years. And some of the early varieties we worked with were high heat unit varieties, 3,000 heat unit varieties, and they weren't adapted to Western Canada. So some of the more recent work we've looked at with some of these low heat unit varieties, 2,000 heat unit varieties, has really shown the attraction of this crop. Two reasons. Number one, it, it produces two and a half to three times the biomass that small grain cereals do. And secondly, producers can really produce a lot of yield on smaller acreage compared to small grain cereals. So those are really the reasons why corn grazing is really attractive to Western Canadian beef producers. Corn grazing is becoming increasingly common in Western Canada due to its high yielding potential and excellent nutritive value for grazing cows during the winter. It provides um, a lot of benefits, but it is a high risk crop due to its high input costs as well as um, the type of feed that you're feeding the animals. So as corn matures, the cob tends to lay down a lot of starch and by the time it reaches half milk maturity, you can have starch anywhere from 20 to 25 percent of the plant. So the reason we did this trial was to refine some recommendations that have been given over the past years. Current grazing recommendations are about three days worth of feed at a time and this is to do with managing waste as well as reducing the risk of acidosis. For acidosis in our trial, we used a pH of less than 5.8 as the baseline because this is when the digestibility of fiber portions of the plant begin to decline. A recent study by Divya Jose at Western Beef Development Center found that ruminal acidosis is a risk when grazing whole plant corn, even with a three-day allocation. So our study is looking at three versus nine days of allocation with or without a fiber supplement to see how this impacts animal performance, risk of acidosis, and animal grazing preference and activity. So in this study, we had cannulates or cannulated beef cows out grazing the corn with the pregnant beef cows. This allowed us to collect valuable rumen fermentation data, including continuous rumen pH, as well as rumen metabolites. What we found with this data is that the rumen pH does drop below our threshold of 5.8 typically near the start of a grazing trial, whether or not it was three versus nine day allocation. In this trial, we didn't see any differences in cow performance, so that's body weight, body condition score, as well as rib and rump fat based on grazing treatment. So that's a positive thing, showing that the animals gain sufficient weight for the winter, as well as they maintain body condition score throughout the grazing season. And there was no difference among treatments. In terms of grazing activity, we were able to monitor the animal's activity throughout the day using GPS collars in which we monitored every five minutes their location, 24 hours a day, and three times throughout the trial for 10 day periods. This allowed us to monitor how much time they spent grazing corn, at a hay bale, in the bedding pack, or at the water trough. What we found with this was when we provided them with a hay supplement or a fiber supplement, they did in fact spend less time in the corn and more time at the hay showing that when you provide this supplement, you will change their grazing behavior, which would suggest that you might reduce the risk of acidosis. In terms of grazing preference in which the plant parts of the animals preferred, we did find that they went for the cob first, then the leaf, husk, and left the stem at the end, showing once again at the start of the grazing period they had a very high energy content diet, whereas near the end of the grazing allocation, on day three or day nine, they had a very high fiber diet in which they were consuming primarily husk and leaf and some stem contents, showing that their diet is changing drastically. As an applied cow-calf and forage research centre, anytime we undertake a study at Western Beef, we're looking to put some numbers to tell a producer what it's going to cost them, make them or save them by undertaking the practice that we're researching. And uh, for this corn study, it's no different. We are quantifying the cost to grow the crop and corn, it's pretty costly to grow. It's up over 300 bucks an acre based on the cost that we incurred. And a large part of that, about a third of it, is just the cost of the seed alone. Plus, it uh, uses quite a bit of nitrogen fertilizer. So you're gonna have uh, high nitrogen fertilizer costs to grow it. But the offset with that is that it's a fairly high yielding crop. So then you're getting up over five tons per acre yield of dry matter yield. And so it pencils out to about three cents per pound. And so that's sometimes, even though that high cost to produce the crop, the high yield is what is alluring to some producers. So over two years of results, we did find that even though you're going out less often in the nine-day allocation system than the three-day allocation system. There is lower labor and equipment, about 40% lower, 
What ends up happening is because you're giving the cows nine days worth of feed at once, they tend to uh, have lower utilization. They're going through it faster and leaving uh, more residue left behind. So you end up with slightly higher costs for the nine day allocation, which simply reinforces that the three day allocation that we've long been recommending is, is maybe the better way to go.